Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome to the Great Meat Extravaganza Fall Fest from Silver Silk and More. My name is Neelay Patel, and I'm the owner, designer, and educator at Silver Silk and More. Um, I do encourage you guys, if you're wanting to learn more about my company, what it is, which will go over the products and everything, um, to follow my social media at Silver Silk and More. You can find it on YouTube, uh, find, my, find me on YouTube. <laughs> you could find me on Instagram and, um, of course, Facebook. So just give me a big thumbs up um, and just uh, do subscribe if you find yourself on those channels. Um, we got a pretty packed show, I must say. Like, I'm excited about today's project. I see many of my friends are already joining in. This is a live show and not pre-recorded. Um, and I've got Miss Joan Dice in the background that's going to help answer questions and um, and point some stuff, I guess, to me as, as we're sort of moving along here. Are y'all having a good time at TGBE? I know this is always such a fun, exciting... Um, it's happening four times a year. And just a lovely way for all of us to get together and to do a live show. And as I'm sort of more, working more in the background of my own company, because I am a one man show, <laughs> um, I'm finding it harder to do the live videos. So this is sort of my my playground, my excuse to do the live videos and stuff with you guys. And there's going to be a few new folks um, that have never experienced Silver Silk here yet. So if you do find um, some questions from a new uh, customer or a new um, creator, a crafter here, um, I just encourage to share the good vibes. If you know uh, an answer to a question that someone does um, pop in, um, you can always chime in and, and say what your experience with the product is. Uh, but I see so many of my great um, my great friends here. We got Miss Kathy Angel. Hi, Kathy. Always lovely to see your face pop in. I saw Miss Patty Perkins. Cannot have a live show without her. <laughs> the back. Um, let's see. We got Miss Teresa and Greta, of course, my Silky Ambassadors, um, who are leading the Silky's Facebook group because um, we have a little dedicated group of crafters out there that have um, pulled in our talent and magic into a Facebook group called the Silver Silk Silkies. So you all can come and join in. Miss Marianne Doy, of course, cannot have a live video without you and your sister-in-law, um, Dav. I, I didn't see her name pop in, but she might pop in a little bit later. So um, I'll keep an eye on on out on those names. Um, and then... Miss Donna. Hi, Donna. Lovely to see your name pop in. Miss Becky over from YouTube. Uh, yeah, I'm kind of just like taking my time <laughs> to say hi to everybody because I hardly see you guys. I feel like in these live videos, I'm just, you know, popping on some names that I enjoy seeing. Emily from Motorcrafts and Leanne is here. Uh, let's see. We got Miss Teresa. Or my friend over from YouTube. I got your email earlier today, and I'm so glad um, she helped correct my times for my workshops. I'll talk about in a minute. So, okay, I feel like we should probably like learn some stuff now, right? <laughs> as we're as we're getting more and more people in. So, um, if you are new to Silver Silk, welcome. Uh, I want you guys to know that I've got a very important announcement, and that is my workshop that's coming up in later in December. Um, as you, some of you who are familiar with my company, I tend to take off during December. This means very low visibility for me. Um, I'm just kind of enjoying life and um, slowing stuff down, and people still put in their orders at SilverSilkOnline.com, but. Um, for me, it's a rest period. And so I'm filling the orders, but I'm not doing any live content. But there is that one week whenever I'm just like crazy and wanting some social activity, right? So I decided to do this awesome little workshop where it's sort of a dead week for us between um, between where Christmas ends and New Year's begins um, for us. And so what I wanted to do was sort of take advantage of this dead time and to create um, some series of projects that we could make together. Some of you may be available for this workshop, which is great, um, and some of you might not. And so I wanted to make it accessible for everybody by having these videos um, that are going to be recorded live. So you'll hear a lot of uh, chit chat from me, <laughs> but they will be recorded. And so you can go back and watch them over and over again. 
And there are two kits for this. So the theme is Seashore, which has nothing to do with New Year's or any any sparkle and glamour. I feel like I did that last year and I wanted to do something completely different this time. So I did Sea and Shore and I wanted to divvy up the kit to make it cost effective for you guys. Um, and, you know, you can kind of pick your journey this way too. So if you are totally wanting to make all of the designs that are sea inspired, um, you can grab that one kit. And if you're wanting to make more of the sort of rustic colors um, and work with, you know, the browns, bronze and golds, you can pick up the shore kit. So what I wanted to do was actually turn my camera toward um, you guys and show you the projects in real life. So in the kit, you kind of get all the good stuff. You get all the beads. This is like a solid, I don't know, maybe 11 inch strand of um, various beads that you get to work with for the number of projects that we've got. Um, you get full three foot spools, except for the pipe chain of the knitted wire. This is the capture chain specifically, which is a ball chain core and it has a knitted wire up, uh, that I've made right on top of it. Um, and then some suede. And then uh, you get a bag of pearls and components and you get all the findings, of course, and the chain. As you can see the paperclip chain is sort of hidden in there. Um, and some jump rings and stuff. And then, of course, the all the caps and stuff for, uh, for the construction of the, of the designs. So specifically, speaking of the designs, here they are in real life. I love this bracelet. And for the life of me, I can't even remember what I named any of these. Um, again, but they're on that card. And so you can sort of pause it to get the schedule. But I just thought this was really just sparkly and gorgeous. You could wear it top up because that little magnetic class just kind of blends in as a component. And what I love about this sort of design is that whenever you see something completely three-dimensional and, you know, designed all the way around with thought. And so it's not just a clasp now, it's suddenly part of the design and it's um, very much integrated. And sparkly, of course, because, you know, I wanted to make these designs pretty rustic, but also it's New Year's Eve, so I got to have a little glamour. Um, but what we're going to do is learn how to use these end caps and combine all of our different pieces of um, our different pieces, our different strands of beads together inside of instead of a singular cap. So it's just a really cool, like, fluffy, I don't know, thick bracelet, um, just full of glamour, right? Um, another project are these earrings. So if you've never worked with Pipe Chain, this is going to be a great introduction of um, what Pipe Chain is. And Pipe Chain specifically, which is what this stuff is, it is a silicone tubing that has the knitted wire um, woven on top of it. And so you get this really great texture, but you also get a very flexible material that you can stuff with wire, with um, beading wire, in fact, um, leather cord. You can basically pass anything through it that is um, around a one millimeter size. And so the wire, for me, the craft wire from Softflex company is what we've used in here, um, will be, you know, of great use <laughs> for creating these earrings. Um, but, you know, their wire just complements my products as well. So anytime I get to use it, I'm very happy. Um, but yeah, so we'll be constructing those. Again, everything except for the craft wire and the beading wire is included in the kit. So really, it's just a focus on the components. But really, a lot of us probably have the craft wire and the beading wire on hand in our stash. So let's try and use some of it up um, and then still be able to kind of work through um, the components that are in the kit. Uh, I was sort of inspired by Kelly, Kelly Sutton, who's actually right after my segment with this design because I wanted to um, interpret a barrel knot, which I'm, I feel like I'm very poor at doing. <laughs> um, she's an expert, but I was definitely inspired by her. Um, so I knitted uh, antique copper wire on top of two millimeter leather cord, believe it or not. So the leather cord, you get a uh, three or two foot. Now I can't remember. I think it's actually a two foot spool of it in your... Um, in your kit and what we'll do is we'll use that to create our knot and to create our pendant um, that hangs off of it here so again the beads are included 
and um, the end caps and everything, the jump rings, the suede. I just really love this design. It's got a great rustic feel to it, um, but it just kind of goes together so well with the pearls. It's a nice, uh, I don't know, dichotomy of materials there. You get the sheen and um, sort of that glitz with the pearl and then the rustic leather knitted wire and the suede. It's just such a great combination. So that's the three designs from there. And then last but not least from the short kit is this really great pendant that I made with the texture chain. Um, and then just use the paperclip chain to kind of create the necklace rope. But I really love this one. It just, it looks so glamorous whenever it's being worn. Um, and I don't know, there's just something about it that just screams high end to me. Maybe the gold. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but I really love this knot. I was trying to figure out a way to make a donut with capture chain. And I couldn't figure it out until like I researched like some knots and stuff that I can make with capture chain. And then this came along and I was like, yes, this is it. This is what I need to be teaching. So I'm really, really excited about this project, especially. All right, let's take a look at the C kit because that one has completely different projects um, using some similar materials. There we go. All righty. Um, same sort of format and setup with the kits as you get a lot of a lot of stuff um, with it. And there will be a schedule as well as some extra bonus things inside of the uh, kits that you guys receive. Look at that. You get a full three foot spool of different knitted wires in this too. So you'll have some materials left over from the kit um, should you want to make extra stuff, which we all do. All right, here's my favorite bracelet ever. I've taught this many times, but it's always been a little bit different because of its color scheme. So I wanted to interpret the C and the, for me, it's a very organic, um, I don't know, a very free flowing concept, right? The, the ocean. And so for me, I just love the silver silk tie-in with it because that's what I'm able to create the, as far as the line work um, and the technique on how to put it together. And it just becomes a really cool, like pretty awesome bracelet, right? And you can turn this into a necklace if you want to later on the, down the road, if you wanted to do that as part of your focal part of your necklace, um, then that's, you know, totally up to you guys. Uh, you'll learn more in the workshop, of course. Findings are included. The beading wire isn't, um, but you can grab some from Softlex Company. I know they're doing a lot of sales this week, this weekend, and so now's the time to take advantage of it, right? But you get the pearls, you get the beads, you get the clasp. Um, I used a button snap clasp on this one. Not a button clasp, but a snap clasp. Um, so you can, you know, easily put that on. Um, and so there's a lot to this design that I really love. Okay, this one is also one that I enjoy. I got this little centerpiece um, from Oscar, uh, one of my friends. And so I was like, I gotta do something with it. And um, so that'll be included in your kit as well. And um, yeah, you get the pearls, you get this really great leather knitted wire. This has white on top of it. This is an antique white color that is knitted on top of like an aqua colored um, leather cord. You get the findings, of course, the clasp, everything. Um, so yeah, that'll be a that'll be a great little design that we get to work on. And then ugh, I just dig these earrings. They again just scream kind of high end to me. I don't know. Maybe it's a simple build. Maybe it's a color combo. But I'm going to show you guys how to put these together. We got some really cool little sand dollar charms, and then we've got these little jump rings that we seed beaded up. So we'll um, construct all of that together as well. Just love them. Uh, and then, of course, we got this really insane, glamorous piece. <laughs> there we go. Um, you get a bunch of pearls, round, and uh, of course, this sort of free, um, I think they're called Kish Keshi, Keshi. I might be saying that really wrong. Keshi pearls. Um, in this great brown color. So I don't know. It, I, again, like that rustic dark tone with the seafoam colors. Um, and this is that shoreline capture chain, which has dark gunmetal ball chain um, as the core. And then you get that seafoam color wire on top. Oh, it's just beautiful. And because you'll have some knitted wires left over in the kit, 
this is sort of just what I put together, but you can definitely use some of the other components in the kit to create really whatever you want to. Of course, you get these really glamorous, shiny bead caps that I'm just in love with. And then um, just your lobster claw clasp and some paperclip chain. Boom. Beautiful. Love this design. Okay. So I hope you'll join me um, again. And this is, uh, I'm going to flash that graphic one more time for the schedule. I should know the names of my own designs, you know, after some, <laughs> you would think, because uh, these, these are like children that I've given birth to. Um, but yeah, there's, there's eight of them. So there's a lot. <laughs> This is going to be such a fun time of the week, uh, for sure. So let me put us back together. Okay, so I thought, you know what? Um, because a lot of folks are purchasing both kits, and I feel so humbled by this because you're supporting my tiny business, right? Um, and I super appreciate that. And for me, I love giving away free stuff too. So I thought... Um, for for each of the kits, um, it doesn't matter which one you pick up. There's going to be a five dollar off coupon if you want to go shopping later in, during that workshop week. I, I sort of hid the coupon code here, <laughs> but there'll be one in each kit. So if you picked up two, that's ten dollars off whatever you want to. Um, so that'll be included in the kit. And then if you pick up both of them, I thought wouldn't a, a great bonus giveaway uh, for get, grabbing both of those kits? It'll be a little gift from me to you guys. Um, some leather, excuse me, some pipe chain that I created. Uh, this is a custom color. It's got sort of a bluish um, pipe chain tubing that has antique uh, white wire that's been knitted on top of it. So if you grab both kits, again, you can get this, you get a full three foot spool and you can use it during the workshop if you want to just have another type of silver silk to use. Um, so thank you from the bottom of my heart and for supporting my company. Um, this is sort of me saying thank you to those who grabbed both of them. All righty, let's get into today's project because I know I'm going to run out of time at some point. All righty. Let's do this. I have coffee today. Did anyone grab an adult beverage? I think... I had I was listening in on the Softlex <laughs> conversation, and I thought about getting an adult beverage, but I'm going to a birthday party after this where there will be uh, many adult beverages, um, I'm sure. So I'm trying to you know keep it keep it nice and focused during our little <laughs> our little um, making here. So how many of you show of hands grab the uh, the ancient Egypt? mystery kit this one was a really fun one to put together i put it together earlier in fact earlier in the year and i didn't know what i was going to do with her when i was going to launch it and then whenever i started putting the color palette together i was like this could really work for fall there's some really great jewel tones in this and the theme of it i feel kind of goes with um i don't know the the season to dress up and and be extravagant right so when I started to put this together, I really explored what kind of knitted wires I wanted to put in, what strand of beads, um, components, and, you know, all the good stuff that would come in the kit, and ended up with several projects that I enjoyed, uh, that I'm going to enjoy actually teaching to you guys. But really, this is one of those that you can pick up and make whatever you want. There is some wire in it. You can uh, see that there's some end caps. Um, which we're going to be using in today's project. Lots of beads, of course. There's some great little pinch beads, um, check glass. So, let's see, this is like eight millimeter size beads. Um, and of course, some little rondelles to work as spacers, which is what I've used it for. Um, there's some really great woodcut pendants. These are quite major, aren't they? Um, and we'll talk about what I did with them at the end, because I think it'll be a little cool surprise for you guys. And I didn't use paint, surprisingly. Um, and then you get a, a couple of, well, not a couple, actually, like three different types of chains here. We've got the antique brass. Um, you get some lapis color, which, of course, lapis was a very prevalent stone in Egyptian um, jewelry design. And then um, I made this chain, actually, just as part of this kit. So it's got a dark blue sort of that lapis color repeated again but it's got this really great 
light colored seafoam color on top. Um, it's almost like a baby blue, in fact, just the way that that light bounces off that dark blue color um, really highlights and brings out that blue, blue color instead of that seafoam green. Um, so I really, really just love this palette and very, very excited to create something with it. So let me uh, move this stuff off and we will get started with our project. All right. So let me go over the tools that you will need to construct a necklace, specifically this one. Um, just, I'm in love with this. Like, I don't know. It, it looks like it's multi-strand, but it's really not. <laughs> and I think design like that to me is just, I get tickled by that. So, so um, as you can see, we just used a nice eclectic mix of beads and, and components to create something. So for my tool set, I like to use a pair of chain nose pliers, a pair of round nose pliers, um, a pair of flat nose pliers. These are wide flat nose pliers that have been dipped in a product called Tool Magic. If you are unfamiliar with what tool magic is, it is a liquid substance that when it is dried, um, and th in this case I've coated metal over it um, with it, it turns into sort of a, a silicone rubbery substance, um, not really substance, I guess a coating for a better term would be coating um, on top of my tool. So that whenever I'm using findings or grabbing things, it's not going to scratch or mar it. Um, it does, it's such a helpful, helpful thing. So you can grab some at softflexcompany.com uh, and um, use it for your tools. I absolutely love this stuff. It's been such a great, um, great tool for crimping my end caps, I will say, which we'll actually do from scratch here in a bit. So I recommend having those. I got a pair of crimpers. Um, I really like the tapered ends of these, especially. And then just a pair of wire cutters that um, I use for my, I use it for everything, actually. I just love these pliers. They're, they don't go dull um, quickly either. So um, I use it for my beading and for my craft wire. All right, from your kit to construct that necklace that I just flashed uh, at you guys, you're gonna need your blue chain. So I have it right there. You're going to need a couple snippets. This is probably about five inches or six, give or take, depending on the length that, that you want your necklace to be. Um, so the necklace, the size that we're creating is gonna be closer to about a 20 inch necklace. Um, so it's gonna be a little closer to the neck. Um, but you know, I've got a couple pieces of the, of the antique bronze here, or excuse me, the antique brass color, solid antique brass, two pieces that are six inches. Um, I've got two end caps, two sets of end caps. So we've got the double strand and the single strand. These are all included in the kit again. Um, you will need a series of beads that I've already pre-strung and I'll go over my pattern in just a few here. And um, what I did to construct my little pendant area here as well. And then you'll need some pipe chain. This is the uh, lapis color and I believe because I'm bad at measurements I'm just going to do this <laughs> grab my ruler and just measure it here for you guys that's the easiest way right let's try and be accurate today so this is four inches and then my solid antique brass oh it was five okay so I was close close pretty close to that so there we are and then um, you'll just need a couple of the beads from the kit. These are those faceted eight millimeter gold beads there. Um, and then four of the smaller rondelles, because these are going to be used to create our little accent um, attachments there on the end of our necklace uh, where the necklace rope connects. So you'll also need your wire from the kit because we're going to be using a lot of it. Uh, and then this design uses all of the wire and you won't need anything else except for a clasp of your choice. That's the only thing I didn't include in the kit was a clasp, but everything else is gonna be in your kit. Um, I like to make an all-inclusive experience here <laughs> with it. So um, yeah, that's, that's it. So here, let's take a close look at what I've strung. I've got my uh, larger, let's see, this was the eight millimeter check glass. 
my rondelles, I use the bead caps from the kit to um, kind of cap in my um, red ceramic beads here that coordinate well with this design. We've got these really great hex cut glass beads, um, some more rondelles to space everything out. Um, there is a bale in the kit that you can use for whatever chain you want to. Um, in this case, I wanted to kind of sandwich in between these two different um, glass beads here. So I did add a little bit of a spacer with a four millimeter bead. That's also, again, all of this is in the kit. So whenever I sandwich it together, it just lays nice and flat. Kind of looks like a bow tie, which I uh, appreciate. Um, and then I just repeated that same pattern back. And what I'm going to do at this point is kind of go ahead and um, create a symbol, or excuse me, a wire wrap loop on my end there. So the wire wrap loop, I'm going to demonstrate it this time, but uh, to connect the rest of it and to make the class kind of move along a little faster, I'm just going to speed through it. But we'll go ahead and take our time with this first one. So to make a wire wrap loop, you're going to grab your chain nose pliers. Let me grab my actual chain nose pliers. And I'm going to just go right next to that bead. I'm going to make sure all of my beads are nice and closed um, on that one end. And I'm going to press that wire away from me so that whenever I take out my plier, it's going to be a 90 degree angle bend to the left. Okay. So I'm going to grab my chain nose, or excuse me, my round nose pliers. I'm going to go into the elbow of where I just created that 90 degree angle bend so that I've got now one part of my, one half of my plier on the top and one on the bottom, right? So with these types of loops, um, you wanna take note of wherever you're creating the loop to begin with so that they all stay consistent. So in this case, I'm about, oh, four millimeters away from the tip. So I can either use a piece of tape to tape off my pliers there, or I can just make a mental note of it. Not all my loops are gonna be perfect um, and the same exact size, but I do want to try and get as close as I can. So having that notation in either in your mind or you know with a Sharpie or something is gonna be important for making consistent loops. I'm gonna flip that wire back around toward me. And once it's pointing toward me, I'm going to flip side. So I'm going, I'm moving from the elbow of my um, 90 degree angle bend. And now I'm just stacking myself right on top and I'm going to finish out that loop by twisting that wire right back into that 90 degree angle bend. So essentially what I've created is just a nice round loop right where my elbow used to be. And then what I can do is grab my chain nose pliers, grab that loop, and I can coil my extra bit of wire here around the stem and that is how you create a wire wrap loop. Ultimately, there's really no right or wrong way. What you're going for is just the look. Um, however you get there is really what's most comfortable for you. Um, and that's why I say there's no right or wrong way, but you definitely wanted to make it look professional, very clean, nice and tidy and not um, crazy looking, right? <laughs> that's my advice for the day. Don't make your loops look too crazy. A little crazy is okay, but not too crazy. So I'm just gonna pinch my wire end in so that it's nice and clean there on the coiling. I did cut it at a slight angle to get it nice and curved in uh, into my loop there. So the other thing I wanna do is just make sure that these loops face the same direction as we're sort of talking here. I can use my fingers to actually form them and get them facing the same direction. So that is how you create a wire wrap loop. I've got my necklace kind of all composed here. On this one, I basically did the same thing for my attachment. The only difference is, is I made a knot here at the bottom by, um, to do that, I can do that real quick for you and show you guys. Okay, I'm going to take my wire at the very end here, and I'm going to just start to curl it around the tip of my pliers. I'm gonna do this twice. Okay, so there's a coiling, it's very loose right now, but I can go back in and just give it a pinch with my chain nose pliers and get it nice and scrunched up there. I'm going to take the end of my wire and I'm going to loop it right into the coils that I just created. And I'm going to pull it tight now. 
Okay, this creates a little knot at the bottom. So essentially, if you've got some extra beads that you want as your focal piece, uh, let's see if I can grab something actually off my table. It's not going to slip through and it just creates a nice little cool decorative touch there at the end. Um, and so that's what I did here to attach it to my bale. Very simple and easy. All righty, so now we can kind of start to attach stuff together. I'm going to grab my silver silk. Again, this is a capture chain, which has a ball chain core running through the chain. It's very soft and supple. You can cut it, and it doesn't fray. As you can see, I easily cut this into pieces. And um, I've got custom-made findings that work for the chain. Work, work with the chain. <laughs> Let's use proper English here. Um, and so what you can do is grab your single-strand end cap. It's got little teeth on the inside too. So that's the fascinating part is that you don't need glue, and you don't need any extra special supplies to crimp them. You just grab your wide nose pliers, um, again, that are dipped in Tool Magic, and you can go in and just give it a good pinch once you know that that chain is nice and secure on the inside of, the, of that channel there. And I'm just gonna crimp the one end for now. Okay, uh, this side looks a little crazy, so I'm gonna trim that off. Okay, I'll just go in and pinch away. Crimp away, really, with my crimp pliers. Okay, so let me get some stuff out of the way here and start to start to kind of construct this in a way that makes sense. So Here's the layout and format for our design. And I think at this point, all we're missing is our element of um, our pipe chain, right? So I'm gonna teach you guys how to create our little attachment that goes there. All right, so going back to our wire, I'm gonna grab some more. Uh, I'm probably gonna use about, let's see, yeah, we'll go with this much. So this is probably about 14, well, maybe not that much. Probably about 12 inches of the 22 gauge craft wire. And I'm gonna go ahead and string my pipe chain right through it. Should easily just uh, kind of go right through. As you can see, pipe chain is such a cool, cool thing that's never been introduced to silver silk before. Um, it was a, a, just an idea that bubbled into my head and I wanted to create it and boom, we ended up with something that was really, really versatile to use. So I just love this stuff. All right. So there is a trick to creating some really like neat stylized ends to this. And so, you know, put your ear up against the screen here. <laughs> what we're going to do is kind of repeat the same process as we were making our wire wrap loops. Um, the only difference is, is I don't want to bend it into a 90 degree angle bend on this. So I'm going to go deep into my pliers because I want a pretty good size loop for this. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and form my wire all the way around. So I've got basically what is a like one sided loop there kind of looks like a cube. And I'm going to do this for both ends here. Okay, so I'll turn this whole piece around kind of get relatively close as I can to the pipe chain and go ahead and form it on the other side. The reason is, is that whenever I start to kind of tighten all this stuff up together, um, it, will, it won't shift in, in position. It'll kind of just stay where it needs to. So, and even before I start to wire up those ends, I kind of want to connect all of my pieces here together. I can either do that with jump rings or I could do it directly attached to this. We're gonna see if I could directly attach it to this and not screw up, um, but we'll see. <laughs> Half the fun, right? To see if uh, all this is gonna work out correctly. Construction wise, it should. So uh, I'm sort of praying for the best here. All right, so once I've attached my, my beaded part on there, I'm going to go ahead and grasp my loop and I'm going to not center my loop. I'm gonna make sure that it stays in that, in that one-sided position. And I'm going to just start to curl this around, but I'm not gonna be very tight with it. I wanna be pretty loose with the wrapping 
and let the coil just form by itself around the pipe chain. The reason for that is once you start to manually tighten it, it's going to slip off and you won't be able to slip it back on unless you straighten out the wire and redo it. But what this also does is it creates a nice little like clean end to the pipe chain. If there's a little bit of a gap, you can just use your pliers to squish it and uh, it'll sort of come together as such. So, and because I had the loop on the other end, it didn't shift in place, um, which was great, especially for making that wire climb the pipe chain. So you could just squeeze that little end to uh, make sure that it's staying put inside there. Now here's the tricky part is trying to get this other piece in here. So I think I can do this relatively easily. I'm gonna, I had to sort of bend my loop to form where I needed it to go. Um, and now that it's in there, I can kind of bend it back in place like that just by twisting in. Alrighty, so here is the part where it gets a little, a little tricky. So I'm gonna grab both ends of my loop there. And now I can start to curl this around, but my wire seems to be short enough to kind of conveniently fit <laughs> through that space. Okay, I'm gonna coil it a few times, making sure that it does climb the pipe chain accordingly. And I get a nice little finished coil there. Looks pretty good. I think this was better than the first take that I had actually. Um, so I'm very pleased with that. Got a little bit of a gap there. So I'm just gonna go back in and press that flat. And I will simply trim that off and pinch in that end. Okay, perfect. This looks really good. Um, it is craft wire, so again, just bend it into place where you feel it's off, and it will do what you want it to do. You can even go back and kind of fix the, the arc on this and, and get it to lay a little bit better. But overall, this I'm pretty happy with this, you know. Um, but I also forgot to do was attach <laughs> my um, single strand end caps to this, but that's okay. We can do that with jump rings, right? Um, I've got a couple here that I can use. <laughs> Go. Oh, you know what? No, that wasn't that. I, that's a false information. Sorry, I forgot we were going to make these beaded components here. That's what that was for. All right, so time to get back our, our wire, and um, we'll just need short snippets of this. You can either make regular simple loops, or you can make the wire wrap loop like we practiced. So I'll do this much quicker. I should be paying attention to some of the comments that you might be making out there in the in the feed here, but um, I wanted to kind of finish out this project or at least get you guys on the right uh, track here for completing it. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and attach my component there. You can use jump rings as I was about to do if you wanted to, um, and that would make this process go a little quicker. But it wouldn't be as decorative, and um, that would just be a shame, wouldn't it? Okay, string these beads right on. Okay, and we'll make our simple loop here at the top. And we will be attaching our single strand end cap this time. Shift, as I mentioned earlier. Get that wire nice and straightened out again. And uh, you can kind of see my loop there. And it's ready to have a silver silk end cap attached in before I close out that loop. It's a little tricky when you have everything attached, but again, I'm not super worried about the craft wire turning on me because I can manipulate it back into getting back into position. There we go. This is just one of the designs you can make with the kit, though. Um, it's pretty fascinating to see what folks come up with in the Silver Silk Silkies Facebook group. Y'all are so creative. OK, 
okay. I'm going to make the second loop and then we'll go back out and kind of um, make sure everything looks nice and tidy. Okay, let's do this. Just cut a little bit of this out. I guess while I'm here, I can kind of scroll through some of these. Uh, some I'm giving some snaps to Joan for, <laughs> for at least posting. I don't think I would be able to do any of this um, without some really great help from, from the gang, I guess, so to speak, uh, in the background there. Teresa and Greta do a great job, and uh, I rely heavily on Joan for a lot of things. Um, so thank you, ladies, uh, for always being there for me and for the silkies. Okay. Here we go, I'm just gonna coil this around. Looks really good. I like the wire wrap loops for security purposes, especially whenever you have this many things on a necklace. It might be a little bit heavy. Um, and so having that extra bit of security and knowing that it's not going to shift or um, come apart is really great. Okay, here we are, our last one here. Let's see how quickly I can do this one. Perfect. Okay, we'll attach this on. And then again, I'm gonna go back through and shift all of my loops to face a certain direction. Uh, just so that my findings and stuff kind of lay the way that I want it to um, intentionally on a neck or when it's being worn. Okay, there we are. Brilliant. Okay, so what I want to do is make sure that these loops are staggered. I prefer for me to have my um, silver silk imprint face up. And so whenever I lay this flat, I wanna make sure that that happens. And to do that, I'm gonna to have to kind of shift these loops a little bit to get it to lay the way that I want it to. And then when we kind of attach everything there at the top, should be perfect and ready to go. Ah, this looks so good. Now we got that nice little triple layered action happening. All righty. So the last step is, is I'm going to scooch all this stuff down. So here's what it looks like now. Up, like the picture that we looked at earlier. And then if I scooch everything down, all we have to do is just sort of line up our chains together. I want to make sure that the logo side stays front up like that. So whenever I grab my double strand end cap, it does the same. Um, the last thing I wanted to do is shift around on me. So just a little bit of extra design detail goes a long way. Okay, again, just stuff both of those chains in there and give it a good smash. The teeth inside of the end cap will do the rest for you. Okay, same thing here. Go ahead and line both of those chains up, stick them inside the end cap, and give it a good squeeze. Take your frustrations out. It's okay, because we've got the tool magic to help us. <laughs> All right, so the last step to this design is to just attach your clasp. And uh, I have a few friends out there that know that I am terrible about attaching clasps to my designs, um, but I do have one today. <laughs> it is, it's been a new year, I, I suppose. Uh, I've been better about getting a clasp on a lot of my designs ahead of time. Okay, there we are. And so the last step would just be to attach my clasp and ah, I am ready to go, y'all. Look at that. Easy peasy. Hopefully the directions make sense. Um, you can always kind of curve this more to get it to lay rounder, I suppose. Um, but I'm overall just really, really delighted by this design. I love all the different mix of colors and stuff. Let's see, how much time do I have? About 50, well, give or take 10 minutes. I should let you guys go for a break, at least in between the next um, PGBE person, which is Kelly Sutton. Um, here's a quick airing that you can make with the kit components. 
So again, we use our knotted head pin technique um, to create a little dangle off of, and you get multiple bales in this kit. So you can use the other two for your airing design. Um, and then you get this really great bead cap that kind of looks like a lotus, and it is very much of the Egyptian motif. Um, so I thought that was a really cool addition. So you just need a little bit of pipe chain, um, and then you'll need some wire. So really the only thing you need to do here is cut a little bit of wire out. Okay, string this through. I wonder how quickly I can make this earring. <laughs> Pretty excited about this. Okay. The more pipe chain you cut, the bigger the loop will be. So just keep that in mind. This is probably about, no, it is. It is um, two inches and three, well, two and three quarter inches um, of pipe chain there. And then what I'm going to do to one end is I'm going to create a, what I call a funky, I don't care loop, which is really just coiling this a couple times. The reason for that is it's going to be tucked away and hidden inside of our little cap. Um, but the double coil gives me enough security to, um, to kind of make this nice and uh, constructed well. I'm going to pass my other end of my wire through the loop so that I get this really great um, clean end here. And then I'm going to stick my cap right through it. I can find the hole. There we are. And what I did was I think I grabbed my chain nose pliers and I just sort of pushed it in and uh, got my loop that way. Also, before we did any of this, I forgot to put my actual attachment on. So don't forget to do that. <laughs> I can do that real quickly, though. There we go. Now I can finish it out accordingly. Okay. Again, just go through that hole. Perfect. Okay, so now you can put on a little accent bead and just do a quick little simple loop here at the top. And boom, you've got an instant pair of Egyptian themed earrings on the go. Okay, got a little bit of a gap there. So what I'm going to do is just continue to cut off a little bit and roll it in. There we go. And then break that neck. If you don't break the neck, you won't get a symmetrical loop. Something to think about whenever you're uh, feeling a little bit neck breaky in your jewelry making, which is probably not the best thing to do. <laughs> Let's just keep the violence uh, out of it, I guess. <laughs> All right, so we will stick on our earring hook there. Earring hooks are also included in the kit. So as you can see, I used nothing outside of the kit to construct these earrings on the fly. There we are. Okay, last but not least, because I've got a few minutes left, is what to do with these, right? You can paint it if you want to. Um, I always think that that's a really fun um, and just a different way of, of creating jewelry, right? You get these really, even from uh, Allegory Gallery where they do wood cut uh, or laser cut, I should say, um, components, pendants, things like that. They're fun to paint. But I thought, you know what? I didn't want to paint it. What if I took colorful thread and what if I just wove it in? And so I just grabbed a bunch of embroidery floss and um, started to kind of wrap it around each of these stems. And... I don't know, just had fun with it, right? Because then I can use the embroidery thread for a lot of other things too. But this, I think, just has a different texture, different feel altogether about it. Um, and so what I was going to do, because I think I've got a few minutes here, is just to quickly demo um, what to do with this. So I'm going to grab a, about maybe, I don't really know how much I'm going to end up wrapping. So I say two feet of some embroidery floss. Give it a trim. Um, and you can double this up to make it wrap a little faster too. So I'm gonna grab a needle here. You can use any needle because you're really not sewing through um, any of this. Uh, you're just using it to sort of help guide your thread. Okay, so I just went ahead and stuck that onto my needle. And then um, 
you know, you can stitch this however you really want to. So I'm gonna start with the back side and uh, keep my fingers on the two ends of my embroidery floss. And then I'm going to start to weave it around and wrap it up on itself. So easy, so fun, so quick uh, to do. Really does work up into a really fun design idea. I feel like I'm on a craft show that's like five minute crafts <laughs> that you can do. Um, it's kind of the fun part about these live, live streams, I think. I was watching the Carol Duvall show the other day. They have um, purchase, like ones that you can purchase on Amazon or something. Um, but I think some of the crafts that they made were quite crazy because like they had these weird, I don't know, painted bears and stuff. The 90s, by the way, was just a weird time for crafting um, and for just stylistic purposes as well. <laughs> they had some fun, fun but quirky things. Um, but I just enjoyed Carol. She was such an easy voice to listen to and made stuff fun and made the audience feel welcome. So I was like, just taking away mental notes of how can I do this? How can I be as great of a person as she is or was with, with her craft show? Um, but anyways, I, I digress. I think I went on a tangent there. Uh, but I loved, loved that show so much. That's what I grew up on. almost to the end here. Yeah, so Michelle from over from Facebook is, uh, as she said, you really did the Egyptian vibe. Oh, and I have a comment here from Sharon. You could also do this one, one millimeter leather or Chinese knotting cord. Absolutely. Um, if you have a way to secure it, there's nothing you can't do. Um, and yes, to the Egyptian comment as well. I love Egyptian aesthetic and design. I love how it works into Art Deco. And I love that minimalism that Art Deco achieves with the Egyptian influence. Um, so all of these different things kind of work together, in my opinion, to just create something very <laughs> harmonious and, and an exciting theme for me personally. Um, so I really enjoyed this box, or uh, creating this uh, kit, excuse me. There we are. I just wrapped a bunch of cord around and called it good. Uh, around the centerpiece here, though, I did weave it in and out. So it created a little bit of a different effect. Lois is asking, if, did you use three threads? No, I just used two pieces of the embroidery. Well, really, a single piece of embroidery floss. But I just, uh, you know, uh, I put it on my needle and just did it into a half. It's probably a better way to explain that. But... Yeah, it's just a single piece of thread. But embroidery floss, there's like six different threads inside of a single thread, I believe, how that's created. So in here, you can kind of just weave through the last few and then pull it out through and uh, create the rest of your design that way. I think I'd probably, oh, there we are. I was like, I probably need to get off camera to do that, but hey, got it. There we go. Yeah, so you could just kind of trim out the rest of your little fuzzies and things here, your cutters. So have some fun with the Egyptian components. Don't take it too seriously. You can um, just enjoy making something that feels good to you in whatever medium that you want to, whether it is painting or threads or leather or whatnot. Um, you can really get decorative with this. So. I'm gonna flip it back around to moi, and we'll um, we'll just do a quick little. I don't know, I don't know what we're gonna get. I wanted to bring Joan on, but I don't think she wants to <laughs> be on camera. She said no. <laughs> That's okay. Um, I hope you guys sign up for my workshop. It's gonna be a really fun week and just a fun way to ring in the new year. Um, I'm trying to think of other things I could do during that week that might make it more festive. In fact, so. Um, yeah, that's that's going to be a fun, fun thing. Um, I hope you enjoyed my presentation. We've got Callie Sutton coming up next. I'm sorry I couldn't give you too long of a break um, between her segments, but um, I know she's going to kill it because she always does. So I want you guys to um, hop off mine and then hop onto hers and just keep the magic going and the support and the, the love that you have shown to each of our individual companies. is just such a blessing. We love you guys so much. 
um, especially with the giveaways and stuff, we try and include as much as we can in there um, from our individual businesses. So go out and sign up for that big giant giveaway that's in the TGBE group. And um, I guess I'll just see you at the next event or even at my next tutorial and hopefully the workshop that I do in December, which will be just a killer time. So love you all so much and um, have a wonderful weekend. And I will see you again. Mwah, 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 mwah. Get all the kisses. <laughs> all right. I'll catch you later. Bye.